we want to use a triple integral to determine the volume of the solid bounded by z equals zero, z equals x, and x equals four minus y squared. Let's first look at this graphically. So the graph of z equals zero is the yellow plane, the graph of z equals x is the blue plane, and the graph of x equals four minus y squared is this green cylinder. Notice how the bounded solid would be this solid here. Notice how it's bounded below by z equals zero and above by the blue plane, z equals x. We can also determine the xy trace by looking down on the xy plane. Notice how the xy trace would be the area bounded by the parabola here and this line here. Again, our goal is to find the volume of the solid of this region here. So going back to our work, we can determine the volume of a solid by evaluating this triple integral, where the volume is equal to the triple integral over the region D, where the region D is the solid we're trying to find the volume of, and then differential V is equal to dz, dy, dx, or any of the six possible orders of integration. So again, we're going to find the volume by setting up the triple integral over the region D. Notice how the integrated function would be one. Let's include one, and then we have differential V. So in our case, we're going to have the volume. And now we need to decide on the order of integration. Let's first integrate with respect to Z, then with respect to X, then with respect to Y. And I'll expand in a moment while we're integrating with respect to X first, and then Y. But let's first determine the limits of integration for Z. Looking at our equations here, the solid is bounded below by z equals zero and bounded above by z equals x. Again, looking at this graphically, from this view we can see the solid is bounded below by the yellow plane and above by the blue plane, where we have z equals zero here and z equals x here. So these will be the limits of integration for z. We'll have from zero to x. And now to help us find the limits of integration for x and y, we do want to determine the xy trace, which is shown here, but let's explain where this came from. To find the xy trace, we set z equal to zero. So looking at our equations again, notice how if z is zero, we'd have the equation x equals zero here. And here we have the equation x equals four minus y squared. So here's x equals zero, and here's the graph of x equals four minus y squared. So this area here is the xy trace. And this is the reason why we're integrating with respect to x first and then y. If we integrate with respect to x first, we need to determine how this area is bounded to the left and to the right, which would be easier than determining how this area is bounded below and above. From left to right, this area is bounded by x equals zero and x equals four minus y squared, which give us the limits of integration for x. Again, we integrate from zero to four minus y squared. If we did integrate with respect to y first, we'd have to take this equation here and solve it for y, which would take more work. It could still be done, it would just take some extra work. And now with respect to y, we integrate from y equals negative two all the way up to y equals two. So this triple integral will give us the volume of the solid bounded by these three equations. Let's evaluate this on the next slide. So we first integrate with respect to z, which will give us a double integral. The antiderivative is just going to be z. And the limits of integration with respect to z were from zero to x. So big F of b minus big F of a is just going to be x minus zero. where the integrand function is now just x, and we have dx dy. So now we integrate with respect to x, which would just give us x squared divided by two or one half x squared. And now we need to determine big F of b minus big F of a. So we're going to have one half times big F of b would be the quantity four minus y squared squared, and then minus big F of A is just going to be zero squared. 
So expanding here, we're going to have the integral from negative two to two of one half times we're going to have 16 minus eight y squared plus y to the fourth. Let's go ahead and distribute the one half. So the integrand function is eight minus four y squared plus one half y to the fourth. And now we integrate with respect to y. So we'll have eight y then we're going to have minus four times y to the third divided by three, or minus four thirds y to the third. And then we have plus one half times y to the fifth divided by five, which would be one tenth y to the fifth. And now we need to evaluate this. So in y is two, we have eight times two minus four thirds times two cubed plus one tenth times two to the fifth, and then when y is negative two, we have eight times negative two minus four thirds times negative two to the third plus one tenth times negative two to the fifth. Simplifying this comes out to 128 fifteenths minus negative 128 fifteenths, which equals 256 fifteenths which again is the volume. So now we know the volume of the solid is equal to 256 fifteenths cubic units, which as a decimal would be approximately 17.0667, again, cubic units. Which again would be the volume of this bounded solid region here. I hope you found this helpful.